Anybody know that God will never let you down? Never let you down. Hallelujah. If it's your first time here with us in person, thank you for coming out today. I pray that you're experiencing the presence and the power of God. You're online. There's a form for you to fill out. There's just a, a link that you can connect with us. Fill that out. and We'd love to reach out to you this week. I'm glad that God has never let me down. Anybody ever let yourself down? Anybody, people ever let you down? But how many know that God will never let you down? Let's praise God for that right now. So I'm in the Minding My Business sermon series. And uh, today I'm going to talk about a plan to expand. Make sure I'm in the right room. Anybody feel like God's growing you? That not only is he growing you externally, there's some things inside. Let me feel yourself changing. I want you to do me a favor. Look from maybe this time last year to where you are now. Anybody say, I've grown? Not done everything perfect, not dotted every I, not crossed every T, but can anybody look back to where you were this time last year? And you look at where you are right now. Can we praise God for growth? Come on, right there, for growth. For growth growth. I'm looking over here at uh, my mom. This time last year, I think you, you still had your hair. But my mom went through chemo last year. And the Lord has brought her through and to see her lifting her hands and worshiping God. Man, if you think God just wants to, watch this. And if you think God just wants to get you back to where you were, you're sadly mistaken. He's trying to get you further, faster in the name of Jesus. God's getting ready to expand you, enlarge you, increase you. And what the enemy meant for evil, God said, I'm going to turn it for my good. You are smarter. You are wiser. You are better. There's a grit. There's a determination in you. There's a go ahead in you. There's a I won't stop. I won't quit. Me and God can figure this thing out. God's expanding your territory. Hallelujah. Oh. been through some grinding seasons but God is bringing me into a season of fruitfulness where I see the fruit of my labor hallelujah oh God oh God thank God that my weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning. I dare somebody by faith to declare good morning, good morning. My night season is over. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My God today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, God. Somebody's getting this right now. He's shifting your season. I'll stay right here with you. Somebody needs this release. Come on, I'll teach you in a moment. This is your season of expansion. You didn't go through for naught, but it's about to pay off in dividends. Even your mistakes are working for your good. Hallelujah. You might be seated. Hallelujah. God bless you. Here's the thing about this. When we're in the presence of God, it's a time for us to release. And I'm not asking you to be emotional. I'm just asking you to release your faith. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds here. And I want everybody that can to give God the best praise that you can. If it's lifting your hands, if it's clapping your hands. But I want you to give God everything you got. Come on, give it to him right now. Don't hold back. Let's worship him right now. We give you glory. We give you glory. 
we give you glory we give you glory well come on I'm gonna push this through we thank you right now we bind every demon we bind every devil every demonic attack over your life and I declare in this season you're pushing through I declare in this season you're coming out in Jesus name there it is there it is it just broke for you you might be seated I felt that Woo! thank you Jesus Wow thank you Jesus thank you for my moment of breakthrough in Jesus name let's try this again y'all sit down we bless you we thank you we give you the I feel breakthrough right here for a moment father release everything that you have promised to us and we take it right now I take that worry that you're never gonna let me down hold on a minute not a shout yet hold one second hold on I take that word that you're never gonna let me down there's a breaking there's somebody going through anxiety somebody is going through depression somebody the enemy is warring with your mind come on say war with me the enemy's been messing with you telling you all kind of lies about what's gonna happen but I come against every lie of the enemy and I want to let you know that he will never let you down hallelujah I need my intercessors and my prayer warriors I need those who know how to worship to come on and travail with me for a moment this is your crowning moment this is your moment of breakthrough yes that's it right there and we bless you we bless you we bless you right now we bless you right now we bless you right now can you bow your head for a moment I'm getting ready to teach but somebody I want you to witness to this something's about to happen every head bowed every eye closed somebody in here you don't know if you're gonna break down or break through but it's gonna be one of the two but you feel yourself teeter-tottering between those I want you to lift your hands I'm gonna push you over the edge you are not about to lose it I feel you pull on me you are about to break through it's not about to fall apart it's about to fall together every lie of the enemy we curse it at the root right now that lie that's telling you to pull away that lie that's telling you to shut down I come against it right now and I pray the love of God surrounds you in the name of Jesus that lie that's trying to pull you into isolation trying to pull you away from love and from what you need I come against it now in Jesus name your mind just lift your hands and worship God right there for a moment we thank you now in Jesus name you might be seated I don't know who you are in here but if you're watching me online the Lord heard you and he just rescued you this morning he pulled you out of that place that dark place that deep place in Jesus name amen can I teach for a moment here get your Bibles out go to Genesis chapter 13 I'm gonna give you a plan to expand normally when I study I study what, what are you speaking to BFF because many times God you he can be speaking to you and you think he's speaking to everybody like God could tell you, Jason, fast. And I say, BFF, we're going on the fast. He didn't tell y'all to fast. He told me. So I have to decipher between what you're telling me and what you're telling the church. But there are moments when I get to share of how God is teaching me. And I want to share a moment of how God is teaching me. Uh, and I want to share that with you all. He impressed on me to share it with everyone here because he said, it's time to expand. Some of you in here right now, you can, you're going to bear witness to what I'm saying because you feel God, that's some opportunities some things that are that God's doing that may be different than what you used to to make make you feel uncomfortable but God's about to expand you and the Lord said to Abram this is before he was even uh, changed the name to Abraham after Lot had separated from him lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward for all the land which you see 
I will give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants uh, also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land. I could hear that when they were singing that. You're never going to let me down. As you walk, you're going to walk with your head up with confidence. Never going to let me down. Walk through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent. Somebody's about to move your tent this morning. Somebody's about to move. Somebody say move. I'm not talking about a physical location, but some movement is about some growth, some traction is about to happen. And when indwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Here's my main idea today. Uh, without a plan to expand, we only have passion for expansion. Without any means to seize or obtain our promise from God. But today, we're going to put ourselves in the shoes of Abram. And we're going to mind our own business. Because here's the reality. Do you not know, and I speak for myself, do you know your loudest amens are, norm are normally not for yourself? Your loudest amens were, I wish this so-and-so could have heard that. Of all Sundays, they ain't here. I need them to listen to this message. But when it hits us, we normally quiet or say, ouch. But we amening for others. But today, we're going to mind our business, particularly because I'm going to talk about Lot for a moment. And those of you who are raised in church, you know about Lot. Him and Abraham had to separate. But today we're going to mind our business because God wants to expand us. I want you to declare that over my life that God is trying to expand me. And if you're really ready for this, lift your hand and say, more anointing, more connections, deeper relationship, a greater network. He's increasing me economically. He's increasing my influencing, in influence. He's broadening my territory. I'm going to look from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I'm going to claim stuff from everywhere in the name of Jesus. God gave Abraham in this lesson one of the greatest leadership lessons and plans ever. And I'm going to convey that with you this morning. The first thing he told Abraham was this. You got to get a word from me. So as you and I get ready to expand, the first thing we got to do, somebody say, I need a word from the Lord. After Lot departed, the Lord spoke. After Lot departed, the Lord spoke. For the purposes of this sermon, Lot is not a person. Because in this cancel culture, I hear you right now, cut and Lot, delete, <laughs> unfollow, block. Lot is not a person for the purposes of this sermon. Lot is a model that we approach life and a mind mindset. Uh, uh, I want to explain to you why a lot of our lots are not people, but mindsets and spirits of familiarity. Um, have you ever read the book of Leviticus? And it has all them names and numbers. There are books in Genesis where it says, and she, he begat him, and they begat on the third day, on a snowy day in the month or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm going to give you Genesis chapter 11, 12. I'm going to bring you to where I am. This is how I understand stuff in pictures. Can I show you Genesis chapter 11 in pictures to show you why the significance of Lot is? Genesis chapter 11. It wasn't James Evan in there, but that's just the best picture I can find. There was a man by the name of Terah. Bernie Mac wasn't his son. I just found some pictures. He had a son by the name of Nahor. He had a son by the name of Abram. And he had a son by the name of Herod. He was the proud father. This is Genesis chapter 11. I'm giving it to you in pictures, right? See, so he had, was the proud father of three sons. Well, something happened with, Her uh, with Heron, and he died. And Terah had to bury his son. Terah had to bury his son. Now think about this. If you are uh, married and your spouse dies, they call you a widow. If you are a child and your parents die, they call you an orphan. If you are a parent burying your child, what do you call that? There is no name to describe that because the loss of that is severe. No parent ever plans on burying their child whether physically or to watch them die spiritually, that's not normal. And Terah went through extreme loss because his son that he loved died. Then Terah picks up and he takes Abraham, and I think Nahor, he got married and just went off somewhere else, and he picked up Lot. Lot was his grandson. Y'all all right for this Bible lesson? Lot was the son of uh, Haran who died. And now they are moving from a place called Ur, the place of loss. And they are shifting in God. 
They felt something shifting. They felt something moving. Tara said, we can't stay here. I feel God moving. I feel him shifting. Something's happening. And they felt a stirring. And they walked out with an anointing saying, never going to let me down. Never going to let me down. And he had Abram and Lot with him. And they went to Canaan, the place of promise. Well, something happened. Tara got to a place, a city called Haran. And the Bible said he settled there. This is a quick lesson. What was the name of his son that died? I don't know if he had a trigger or something happened inside of him. Anybody ever been going along, you fine, never going to let me down. And a reminder of your past, the trigger of failure comes and clicks inside of you. And you find yourself shutting down. And Satan uses that door to talk you out of what God said. The Bible said Terah settled in Haran. The same name of the son who lost. And he was on his way to Canaan. If settling was bad enough, because many of us have settled for what God said, instead of waiting on God's best, he not only settled there, but he died there. He died in the city with the same name. This is Genesis chapter 11 in pictures. With the same name of the son that he lost. Something happened inside of him. God didn't stop moving. He did. I got a word for somebody in here. God has not stopped moving. You have. God has not settled. You have. God has not died. You have. He's still speaking. He's still moving. Tara died before reaching the promise. You know how I know that God is still moving? Because we pick it up in Genesis 12. That's where we start with the father of faith. And God told Abraham, get away from your family. Get away from your kindred and go to a place that I'll show you. He said, I'll make your name great. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And we say, I'm the seed of Abraham. We start there, but that ain't where Abraham started. Because where was Abraham going? Canaan. But here's the reality. That promise wasn't initially made to him. It was made to his father. But he had to pick it up because watch this. If you stop, God ain't going to stop. I told God, if you're not going to stop, I'm not going to stop. If you're still moving, I want to move with you. And I want to challenge you in here, don't stop when God's still moving. So Abraham picks up, and look who he takes with him. And he ain't have Michelle Obama, but he took his wife, Sarah. (laughs) And he took Lot. He said, get away from your family and your kindred. But I imagine he made a felt an affinity for his brother who died and said, I'm going to make sure I take care of your son, so I'm going to take him with me. So he's taking Lot with him in Genesis 12, and they go into a place. I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And I'm not beating up Lot, but sometimes there are things that we have, mindsets, not people, that are not supposed to be there. Genesis 13, I'm telling you it in pictures, picks up. And in 13 and 6, we see a dispute arise between Lot and Abraham. Here's the reason why. The land that they were in could not support both of them. There's going to come a point in your life where you got to make a decision. Because where you are, all of your energy, all of your focus is not going to support your faith and your fear. It's not going to support your faith and your complacency. You're going to have to make a decision that I'm going to choose faith. And not only did Abram and Lot have a dispute because Abram was trying to work it out, they're, they're, uh, the, the people that were with them started to get into it because there wasn't enough room for all of them. Can I tell somebody in here the dispute that you're feeling inside of you may not be the devil? It may not be the devil attacking you, trying to kill you. It may be something called growth. Well, God said, there's some things I'm trying to mature you out of. There's some things that I'm trying to stretch you out of. I'm trying to expand, and there's a mindset that I'm trying to shift you out of it. Now that you know why him and Lot had to separate, can I talk about Lot for a moment? Lot is a mindset that represents what got you here is not going to get you there. Here's why I'm saying Lot is not people, because in this council, in this cutout culture, and I believe we've seen the benefits where people get our attention, but here's the negative part of it. We've cut people out of our lives that God wanted to stay in our lives because many of them made us uncomfortable. Because here's the reality. Once you cut out all your Lot people, you still got to deal with the Lot in you. And pointing out your problems don't solve mine. I still got to learn how to deal with me. Here's what I learned that God really wants to deepen my relationship. Here's a big statement that I want to show you. When Lot departed, God spoke. Some things God cannot show you in the presence of your lots. 
Because Lot will reduce what God is saying to your experience and to a spirit of complacency. You ever try to tell somebody your dream and they flood it with all these negativity and all this doubt and you're like, or even yourself, you talk yourself out of what God wants to do. Here's what God really wants to do. He wants to break the spirit of familiarity and comfort and move us to a new place. Lot is an antiquated model that we bring to new situations. We have to decide, do I love my next more than I love my lot? As a preacher, the things that are my lot are not necessarily what's relevant in this generation. Uh, this generation is not in love. If I'm, I want to evangelize. I want to bring all these people in. We were at an AAU tournament. I saw all these kids out there. I said, man, how can we get them in church? And I'm seeing people lined up everywhere. And I said, how can we get them here? My lot may not necessarily bring them in. My lot makes me feel good, but it may not be effective in this generation. Can I tell you about my lot for a moment? My lot is a hooping, singing preacher. Ooh, I love when that organ gets to going. And then preachers, I can't do them, but then preachers can hit them runs. Ooh, and y'all get to turn in circles. But you got a generation now whose most effective preachers don't hoop. They may get the organ with them, but they be up here like me, just out of breath talking. They don't know what a hooping is. They don't know what all this stuff is. Yet the generation of people, when I say, let's get loud, y'all think we talking about noise. They talking about a smell. We got a generation, and we want three and four hour services, but they can communicate in 142 characters. They can communicate a message and a meme in a two-minute video. So my lot may not be effective in this generation. We got a generation of, we say, it's going to take a long time to make it work. When in their generation, they've seen millionaires been made overnight because people become viral sensations. You got groups of people, I wouldn't even call names. They just get paid because of how they look. A person who just, what's that, I love watching them on TikTok, Junebug, whatever, I can't remember his name. He don't do nothing but dance in Reeboks. Now I think he done signed something with Reebok. They're like, Man, I've been wearing Reeboks since I went to fifth grade. I ain't got no money. My lot may not pull in them, and I got to ask myself, what is my lot that I need to take another look at that's going to evangelize and bring? Because watch this, Jesus still saves. He still has a purpose for all of us. He still wants to use all of us, and we cannot separate because I got it the old school way, and you're going to get it the new school way. I don't know about you, but I tarried for years for the Holy Ghost. Oh, we, we, you know, we were on the altar. We had a man named Brother Britton. Brother Britton be on the one side. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody else said, let go. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? You know what I'm talking about? People are spitting. Y'all don't have, some of y'all have no clue what I'm talking about. And we tear, Jesus, 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 Jesus. We just want to speak in tongue. Somebody else coming here and now you learn how to get, they get to speaking in tongue in 30 seconds. No, that ain't right. You got the labor for this. Where I come from, when you pray, you got to, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. And you see the people, just, just come on out, devil. We ain't playing with you. That work for you? <laughs> Even with some of our music, like you used to, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. We love it. I ain't get them that soft. The reality is your lot can be causing you to miss your Canaan. The Bible says when lot separated, God spoke. What is your lot that you need to get rid of? Some of us, some of us ourselves are stubborn as they come. I'm going to say, just look straight ahead. Everybody trying to tell you, that, I ain't doing that. They ain't, no, I'm just the way I'm going to do it. You're like, how is that working for you? Stubbornness and pride and not willing to change can be a lot that is in the way of God, and you're wondering, God, why don't you speak to me more? If you will get rid of Lot, because every time he spoke, Lot minimized it and discarded it and turned it into something that God never said. Number one, get rid of your Lot. Number two, develop a vision from looking out before you go out. This minister to me because, boy, I know as soon as God speaks, I just go headlong and start doing stuff, and I ain't really thought about it. And it's like, all right, Jason, you got to plan this thing out. You know, they say, don't, don't you want to say that? They say man is the head. If the man is the head of his house, then his wife is the neck. You know the neck is the control center of the head. I'd be like, we're going to do this. Have you thought about this? Well, no. And what about this? Well, no, not really. 
it helps you to see. And you can have, now you have these wars between the neck and the head. And when the reality is we both go in the same direction. So you got to get rid of your lot so that you can look out before you go out and plan. Here's what the Lord said. Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Here's the plan. He didn't say go anywhere first. He just said look from where you are. We make the mistake of going before we're looking. Here is how you look. You look out before you look in. If most of your energy, I'm not calling you vain, is spent looking in, when God is speaking, you're missing it. God said, I want you to go, but, but God, I have this problem. Uh, but God, this is going on in my life. And you telling God, saying, look, and you arguing with here, because a God-sized dream cannot be solved by looking in. I got to solve it. Most of your energy right now is like, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to get out of this situation? And God said, uh-uh, this one's on me. Jesus. He said, this one is not about you. This week, I want some of you to trade this for this. Instead of always looking at yourself when God speaks, I want you to start looking out from the north. east and the west come on the north the south the east and the west somebody ask what you doing i'm looking to the north the south the east and the west the reason why god is not answering you about what you're praying with in here is because he's not speaking here he's speaking here <laughs> fix me oh god he said when you go in the direction that i speak i'll fix we want to get it all together, and then we're going to go. Most of you all know this. When God speaks, you ain't ready half the time. That's why he qualifies the call. You're not qualified before you're called. He calls you first, then he qualifies you. So I'm going to focus on looking out. I'm going to get a vision beyond me. Because if I'm looking to hear for a vision, my vision at best is going to be to fix me. Get myself together in this season. This season, I'm just going to focus on me. I'm going to make sure I'm good. I'm going to make sure that I look out for myself, that I'm taking care of. Because you don't look out for you, ain't nobody going to look out for you. And the Lord's saying, you're looking wrong. And this season, I want you to look out. Because if you look to the north, south, east, and west, most of you will be honest with me. When you start looking at yourself, you go in instead of going out. You start isolating. You start telling yourself stuff that God never said. You need a vision from God by looking out that makes you nervous. You need a vision that is beyond what your wallet can pay. God-sized dreams are never in your account right now. You don't need finishing faith until you get started. God said, I want you to dream so that it demands a mentor. It demands opportunity. That it demands people showing up saying, I don't even know how we got connected. It was the vision that God gave you. Because if you could, you could do it, it wouldn't need God. We need a vision that attracts provision instead of chasing provision. I say, I've always seen that in people say, I'm a paper chaser. That's always bothered me. Because if you chase money, money have you going everywhere. It'll have you doing all kinds of crazy. If you chase opportunity, it'll have you laughing and stuff ain't even funny. Doing stuff, being crowds, you don't even like, you ain't got no business being in. But the Lord said, this, Jason, in this season, I'm going to have you attracting provision. Y'all, there's this place downtown called Savannah Kitchen, downtown Nashville. Not downtown Muppets, but it's in Nashville. Y'all, they make these chocolate pralines. Man, y'all ought to try them. Somebody told me about the gophers. I've been walking by them. I've been afraid to try them. I, mean, just, I get stuck on one thing. I need to look north, south, east, and i just been looking north. Y'all, I can be at home, and it'll call me. I'm like, we got to drive and go get this stuff right here. Savannah's Kitchen ain't knocking on my door. They ain't sending us mailers. I don't even know if I follow them on social media. All I know is that I went in there and they had this little plastic cup and they let me taste it. And I've been hooked ever since. You know why I love Jesus? Because I tasted how good he was. And y'all, I done been praying. I done learned how to fast. I done learned how to read my word. All I had to do was taste it. Man, you be fussing people. You need to pray. You need to get your life together. You need to read your Bible. If you ever taste how good he is. You will find a way to get there. 
I don't consider how much gas I got nor the money in my account. All I know is when this stuff called, we got to make it happen. When you get God's goodness and what he wants to do in your life inside of you, you don't care how jacked up you are in this mirror. All you know is I'm looking from the north, south, east, and the west, and God is about to sin the very thing that I've been chasing. That's somebody's word in here. God's about to sin the very thing you've been chasing. Man, we were, went down. Y'all been to downtown Nashville lately? If you haven't, but wear your mask. You won't go down there. But, man, there are people everywhere. And we went to Top Golf, and uh, we had about a two-hour wait. I said, man, let's go eat Slim and Husky pizza. Ooh, we went down there. There wasn't no line. I said, this is the Lord today. <laughs> and y'all know when I left there, I had to walk right down the street and get me some of these. But right next door to Slim and Husky's was Hattie B's. I didn't know Hattie B's was even down, uh, downtown Nashville. And, man, these folks were in line waiting to out. Hungry people ain't happy. These folks in line smiling, watching somebody else eat. You know it's bad when you're eating and you watch somebody else eat. They're just sitting there grinning. Watching. I said, how in the world can somebody get somebody to wait for an hour hungry, watching somebody else eat, praying that they get up and move and they never break line? I said, God, I want that kind of anointing right there. He said, Jason, that anointing only comes when you look out. When you look out, people will find you. When you look out, you will see what's out there on the north, south, east, and the west. When you look out, it will create a demand for you. Y'all, can I tell you another story? I was in Philadelphia, and there was this church. I watched them grow. Uh, Mount Canaan. Was it Mount Canaan? Uh, Enon Baptist Church. The pastor was a phenomenal teacher. Uh, he talked didactically from the Word of God. He didn't hoop. He didn't do none of that stuff. And we waited in line for a noon Bible study, missed our lunch to hear that man teach once a week. I said, what in the world would have us standing in line, waiting to get in, clamoring for seats? He said, there's, Jason, there's an anointing on him that is pulling on something in you. I have heard better preachers and teachers. But there was something inside of him that stirred up something inside of me. And I said, God, if you can do it there, do it in me. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but what God has placed inside of you is going to create a demand. But the reason why many of us are frustrated is because it's hard to place a demand when you're not in demand yourself. God's going to create a demand so that what you need shows up in your life. Here's how you do it. Before you look here, look here. See what God shows you. And I'm only going to look in the mirror to ask myself, what type of person do I need to become to seize what God says? Where do I need to grow up? Because here's the challenge. If I look here first and then look here, here's what will happen. God said, go look at the land. You will miss the land because of the people. And you'll walk in the land and say, I ain't going that God. Them people funny. I ain't fooling with them. You know how I am with people. And you'll talk yourself out of the land God have only to be comfortable with people who make you comfortable. Before you look here, look here. I don't know why I felt that so strong because many of us have missed what God said. Because we got this spiritual discernment. And there's a fine line between discernment and insecurity. You pick up all the spirits, and I don't feel right. God said, God said, I ain't worried about the people. I'm going to give you the land, and you're going to walk in with such a force. Folks know who don't care no drama with them. Folks know who you are, and God said, I wouldn't lie. When God sent you there, don't you get distracted by the mess around you, because by the time he gets frenzied, he's going to change the culture through you. Look out from the north, south, east. Y'all right in here? And the west. The next thing, before I do it, I promise you I'm almost finished. The next thing he said was arise and walk. After you look from where you are, you ain't got to go yet look. Just look from where you are. Get you some binoculars. Go on the Internet and look it up. Go research it. Go look it up. And then he said, go explore and prepare. Arise and walk, walk means go and explore the north, south, east, and west. Can I challenge somebody here who's writing a vision for your next thing in your life? Don't finish writing your vision just from looking. Until you go out there and see everything that's out there. The Lord gave me this idea, and I called a friend of mine who's in this uh, certain field. I said, man, I got something I ain't seen nobody do. You know, you get hyped up. You got it. I said, man, this is going to change the game. He and that X, Y, Z. And I, he noticed he wasn't too excited. And he said, hey, man, I need to send you something. He sent me an article. And there's somebody else already out there doing the vision in my head. 
I said, that can't be God. And God said, boy, why am I going to give everything to one person? He said, you lie beside, you don't want to do it. I got to find somebody to do it. He said, that's enough for all of us. Y'all, we in Christiana, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all go out there. Y'all seen that street out there? Y'all passed a whole lot of stuff. There are two, three churches on this one corner. This corner right here. And all of us are needed. What you are doing, there may be other people doing it. That has nothing to do with you. We all have our own. You're not going to hear me talk about this Church of Christ brother around the corner. You're not going to hear me talk about this church around the corner. We do it. It don't matter. Everybody likes something different. Somebody said, I don't really like his preaching. Go find somebody who you do like they're preaching. There's enough room for all of us. And when we get to the point that my self-esteem is not placed in what you think of me, it's placed in what God says I am. Then I can go explore and prepare, even if we're doing the same thing. Watch this. That church down the street ain't our competition. They can build three other churches on this street, and we ain't got to be nervous. Why? Because what God has from us, us, we're going to look to the north, south, east. Can I tell somebody to take that insecurity thing off of you? When God anoints you, you ain't the only one he's anointing. He's connecting you with other. When he anoints you, don't get weird when God anoints you. Like, oh, God doing something. He's doing something in all of our lives. Go be friendly. Go make friends. And the reason why many of us are frustrated, don't nobody know who we are. And when they see us, we call it being deep. It's spooky. One of the most anointed things you can do is go shake somebody's hand and say hello. And many times, here you go, when you're exploring and preparing, we hide behind what's familiar. And for many of us, what's familiar is spiritual. Because we'd rather hook them a shine, speak in tongues, and lay hands. than they say, hey, how are you doing today? My name is Jason Scales, and this is what I'm doing. I'd love to give you the opportunity to be a part of it. Ooh, I feel the Lord speaking right now. And the truth is, I could be nervous to have a conversation. We were sitting in a men's meeting yesterday, and Randall Harvey did an exercise with us. He made us talk for two minutes by looking somebody in the eye. And, man, I, I challenge some of you to do that exercise as you are preparing to go explore. Work on having a conversation where you look somebody in the eye, not staring them down, but doing eye contact with confidence. So as you go out and explore, you're going to see stuff you've never seen before. Being from Shelbyville, I just think, man, being in a small city, we just country, and we don't know it. Man, I just, I was missing it. Because that people moving in Shelbyville. That great things happen in that city. The Lord going to have us do something in that city. And I found out it wasn't a city all the time. It was me. Because then I moved to Chattanooga. And I said, oh, this is the big city right here. There were people who lived in Chattanooga who had never been to Lookout Mountain. Didn't, knew what, didn't know what Ruby Falls, if it was a woman pouring cu- uh, uh, water from a cup. They don't know what Ruby Falls is. They didn't know what the incline, I ain't getting on that, they go two miles an hour down a hill. I ain't riding that roller coaster. It's not a roller coaster. I went to Philadelphia, and I said, oh, this is the big city here. There are people living in that city, never seen the Liberty Bell. Hadn't been to the play Independence Hall where they signed that great document there. Do you know there's people in Orlando who have never been to Disney World? They just know people go there. People are moving in Rutherford County. There's a rate of like 90 people a day. Why are they moving here? The place you're running from, somebody running to. When you go explore, I guarantee you there's something you're missing that you've never seen. God will show you a vision of what's supposed to be. But go out and explore. And watch this. He said, I will give it to you. Prepare. This ain't going to make you shout right here. But you know one of the worst things that could happen to any of us? Hear me when I say this. One of the worst things that could happen to any of us is that God bless you with what you pray for. Because if you're not ready for it, it will crush you. Are you ready for the pressure of what this will bring? Are you ready for every move you make to be scrutinized? Are you ready for every post that you make to somebody? I really want to know what they mean right there. Are you ready for everything? Are you ready to have to trust people you're not friends with? Because trust is not a who, it's a how. Oh, I can't trust. No, no. I trust you to do what you can do, and if you can't do it, I'm not going to trust you to do it. I love my son, Isaiah. I'm not going to say to death, I love him to life, but he ain't balancing our checkbook. But I'll trust him to teach me how to play whatever he's doing on that game. You trust people to do what they're gifted to do, and that's it. You got you to be friends with everybody. I don't have to be your friend to be friendly to you. You all right in here? And I'm not walking in there, oh, I wonder what they're going to No, how can we connect? That's what I want to know. I'm getting rid of my lot. I'm just talking to here so God can expand me. When you're every, I, this is so funny. 
there's a person who lives around here. Um, they saw me at the liquor store, and they ain't looked at me the same since. I ain't saying drink going to send you to hell. I was in there getting my vermouth for my spaghetti, and I had some sweet vermouth wine. And then I liked grenadine and pineapple and orange juice. And I had all this stuff together. They still ain't looked at me the same. When they see me now, they put their head down. And I'm thinking, you in here too? <laughs> Who I can't hear him preach now. Woo! It's hilarious. People's mindset, I done, been in, I done been in gas stations, and people about knocked over the whole thing because they signed a lottery tickets, and they see me walking. I'm like, I don't care that you pay the lottery. Just tithe if you win. <laughs> you know what God is telling you to do? Here's why he's telling you to explore. He wants you, because many of us, our circle is like this right now. And God said, I want you to look from the north, south, east, and west. I want you to draw a bigger circle. Some of you are in this season, my circle will get tight. Yeah, it can get tight and big at the same time. Hey, your circle don't, yeah. watch this. Everybody you connect with doesn't have to be a friend. Matter of fact, what ruins many friendships is when you come in business and don't have an understanding that you cannot separate the two when you're trying to do them. You need people who God sends in your life and you explore. I didn't know this stuff until I started to explore and prepare and people started to teach me this. Explore. And prepare by making a bigger circle and ask yourself, how do I need to mature to accept the people that God's sending in my life? And the last thing is this, I'm through. Make a move. The Bible said, then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by Tebereth, trees of Mamre and Hebron, Hebron. He didn't get rid of his tent. He just moved it. God's not trying to get rid of all your stuff. He's trying to move you. You are going to do tremendous things when you move. That word memory uh, means this. I looked it up. It means vision, fatness, strength. The word Hebron, it was in place of Hebron. It means communion, a place of binding friendship. God said, when you move in your vision, I'm going to give you strength. Fatness means rich. I'm going to supply everything that you need. And you're going to be in communion with me because you're going to be looking here and not just at yourself all the time. And you're going to move to a deeper place in me because you're going to commune and you're going to see things as I see them. And when you start to move, you're going to move your department. You're going to move your business. You're going to move your business. The reason why many of us are not moving, it's my greatest challenge for you this week, is because we spend all of our time here. One of the greatest mistakes that I can make as a preacher is to just work on my ability to communicate. When I started preaching, man, that's a, my parents would tell you, that was a confidence that came on me. I talk country, I can slur words, but man, I got a clarity in my speech and a power and authority. That's a gift, and the gift comes perfect. And most of us spend our time working on our gift, and that is not what's holding many of us back. What's holding many of us back is that we are not gifted to carry what we've been gifted with. That's called maturity. Where I prepare myself to handle the weight of what God is doing. Let me tell you this. I know this. God's going to do it in your life. But when you get there, if you're not prepared, you cannot enjoy it. You're always looking over your shoulder. They're coming for me. It don't matter. When you get where God is taking you, God said, I want you to be prepared. This week, I want you to trade this because this will tell you all your enemies, all your insecurities. This right here. I'm not trying to blind you. I don't know if I'm probably messing up y'all camera. Y'all just mad at me back there. But I want you to trade it. For, I don't know if this messes you up either. For this look out from the north south east and the west north south east and the west watch this if you're feeling down your joy your joy is going to expand when you start looking out all your habits your strongholds i guarantee you this are going to expand when you start to look out stand to your feet i was talking to this uh, young man and he had to start uh, smoking weed he had to stop him smoking it, not because of hell, but because he won't lose everything if he failed another drug test. And I said, hey, man, I'm going to tell you how to break it. I said, if you stop looking here and you quit trying to break it, and you look here, and you see where God is taking you, this is 
not going to be there. And at a certain point, you're going to make a decision between your lot and your next. Everybody here who's struggling with something, the way to break it is to quit focusing on it. I know that sounds crazy because you want an anointing line with oil to break this thing off of me. It can jump off of you, and they're going to get right back on you if you don't go nowhere else. If you get a package to your house, if you get a to and no from, where's it going to go back to? The reason why many of us not have deliverance is because we know where we are, but we don't know where we're going. When you go where God has you to go and you look out, all that stuff going to break out of you. Father, I thank you. I feel in this room that many of us are ready to look out. Man, I feel strength. Thank you for tuning in with us online. I pray that God show you you incredible things in your life I pray that you look out and see what God is doing incredibly in your life in Jesus name God bless you amen can I just pray for a minute in this room y'all give me a few minutes I feel a stretching in here I feel like God is challenging many of us to look out can I pull on this moment Father I thank you while I was uh, preaching I just felt something Rico I feel like the Lord is stretching there's a look out and B I feel like there's a look out Tiffany, I felt you pulling on me. I feel like there's a look out that the Lord is doing. And he's going to expand what the Lord is doing so that you can see further than where you are. And it's going to connect you with people that you never imagined. Prepare yourself. All of everybody in this room who has great things, Sam, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the good things you're about to walk into. Prepare your mentality. Prepare your mind. You you prayed for this moment. Prepare yourself to walk in it. Nothing's going to stop it. Nothing's going to block it. We know that. He's never going to let me down. Never going to let me down. Here's the reality. He's never going to let us down. But God said, watch this. God will let you show up somewhere not ready. Because ready is not on him. It's on us. Father, here's my prayer. Get us ready. Help us to show us the thing to get it, that we can get ourselves ready for what you're about to do in our lives. I thank you for what you're about to expand in our lives in the name of Jesus. Y'all with family here? Travis, you still back there? There are opportunities that are about to hit your house. The Lord's been speaking to you about some things. He's been stirring your heart about some things. There are some opportunities. The Lord said, listen, they're going to happen and they're going to become clearer. But he said, I want you to take this step right now to start preparing yourself for it. Don't let it scare you. Don't let it make you nervous. He said, when I speak, don't look here. When I speak, look here. Because here's what I want to tell you. When I tell you this is for you, but it's for everybody in this room. What you are seeing is bigger than what you can ever imagine. But you got to allow your eyes to see something bigger. In the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. How many of you feel God stretching you? You're ready to expand in this place. Lift your hands in this room. God, expand us. Look out from where you are. Go explore and prepare. Then make a move. We thank you for our move. If there's some lots in your life that you got to deal with, some spirits of complacency, fear, and all those things, I want you to get ready to remove those things now. And I want you to have a conversation with God about the lots in your heart that he needs to deal with, that you allow to talk you out of what he said. And Father, we denounce those, and we're ready to move forward in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm through, but remember, this week, move from here, sorry if it's blinding you, to here. And you're going to see things from the north, south, east, and the west.